Hey guys, I just, uh, this is Danny. I just wanted to go over um, some side chaining techniques, which initially will be me going over uh, what Pete Sasquax um, originally shared with us on his channel about splitting koala into two monos. Um, thanks for sharing that, Pete. I'm sorry, I've, I've uh, miscredited Lugo with sharing that technique in the past. I owe you an apology. Shout out to Pete. Check out Pete and Lugo. I'll put um, links to their tutorials down below. Um, what Pete didn't do was go from scratch. Uh, so I'll do that quickly. Um, but then after that, I'm going to go off in another direction because Pete used um, Sidekick to fake side chaining. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is use the free Rough Rider plug in to do actual um like live side chaining so you don't it's not like a predefined pattern i'll get to that so just before you get confused what i've got here is my mic on the left and the red rough rider which you can pretty much ignore which is why it's red um is just i've got myself side chained the voice is side chaining off the master output just so when i've got a beat playing um, it ducks out the way while I'm talking so you can actually hear what I'm talking about. So this is a just a, like a super quick little beat I just started just for this demonstration purposes. Um, I fed in a uh, audio kit synth one to make that little synth thing and I put in a beat. Now what Pete did was put koala in the first slot i always like to use it in the effects slot because um it means that i can easily either put something above it or put a bus above it in order to get new sounds into koala so i always put koala in the second slot so from there uh what we quickly need to do is start uh a new channel now you see that Koala's going to B, and that's just so you could hear it going through the master chain, but I'm going to put it to mix bus A and create a mix bus A here um, and add stereo processing, stereo to mono, all the way left. And I'll duplicate this. I'll do the same thing all the way right. Now, what that means is that everything coming out of Koala is now coming out of both of these channels left and right so i can rename this uh if i really want to koala l and koala r okay i'm throwing in a quick edit here because i did something a bit confusing um so what i've got to do now is uh see these channels that i've created are going out of the headphone master first thing I need to put it into mix bus B so that is going into the one that is using my duct vocal from there I can play it okay now at the moment the sounds are all panned center so I'm going to pan the drums to the left and pan the um, chords to the right. Now what you see here is Koala R is the melodic stuff. If I mute the drums you'll just hear the melodic stuff and vice versa. Okay so I think that basically covers the bit that I fudged up before. I'm gonna cut back to the other video now. Now uh, what I want to do is the, the only, I mean, the only kind of downfall to this technique is that obviously it means everything's coming out mono. So I like to sometimes on the melodic stuff, especially put a wider plugin, which is free. Um, and I'll just turn that up. It just kind of, just a little bit, it adds a little bit of stereo space to the thing that you made mono. Um, I won't add it to the drums. Now, next thing is we're going to put a koala, uh, not koala, it looks like a koala, doesn't it? But a Rough Rider um, instance onto here. Now, at the moment, it's just um, not doing anything. So what I need to do is with a multi-bus audio instance, put in the Rough Rider sidechain. 
Okay, so if I turn side chaining on, now you'll see that it's actually ducking along with a kick. All right. Now let's see if we can make that more obvious. So what we've got here is the, the, the kick from the left channel and the snare actually, but it's just not really triggering the sensitivity. Um, if you, I, I did another video about actually isolating um, the bass frequencies into a side chain because Rough Rider only lets you do a high pass filter. If you want to isolate the kicks, you need to use a low pass filter, which involves adding another bus, which I've done in another video. So, um, so now you could, should be able to hear that. It's definitely ducking. Every time the kick hits, right? Okay. So, what I actually wanted to get to was now that you understand that left is side chaining to the right and it's not being triggered by the um, the pad itself, what I've discovered is uh, a cool technique with new rack. Um, so if I go to new rack MIDI, what I want to add a, is a dynamic velocity control. So what that's doing is and that's why I showed you the Rough Rider stuff. This threshold attack release sensitivity is basically the same or similar to the compressor itself. So depending on the sensitivity, what I'll do is I'll show you, I've got um, a MIDI CC generator and I want this automation lane here or this um, velocity control to control the value of CC1 or like the first value of this, the generator. So let's say that right now. At the moment, the base level is what what controls the base level, right? So um, when I say base, it's like not BASS, but like the low at the moment, that's 100% and you see the value is 127. Let me put the threshold up so that nothing happens, right? So now basically these two knobs are exactly the same, okay? But what this allows you to do is use the same controls as you would on a compressor, like i.e. the threshold, to actually start moving knobs around, okay? So what I'm doing is that the kick, you see that it is actually triggering on the snare, but just not as hard as the kick. You see the kick is going from 68 to 127, right? Now, you can change the release if you want it to release slower or quicker. Okay. Now, and the attack and the sensitivity. Zero sensitivity. Okay, so that's like basically multiplying the effect and if I click invert it'll go down instead of up so what this allows you to do is um, control basically anything that is MIDI controllable with a sidechain compressor instead of CC1 I'm going to change this to CC let's see what I've got it mapped as so uh, for example let's go to perform tab settings MIDI um, map MIDI. Okay, so I've got the effects here going from 22 upwards. So 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So let's say we want to control the filter with that. So that's 29. Oh, actually, I'll just click that. So let's change this to 29. Boop. And what I'm going to do is set Koala to be MIDI controlled by new rack. And that should be everything we need. Now what you'll see is that, you see that filter is actually being controlled by 
the um, kick. Now let's turn the sensitivity up a bit. Reduce the release, or increase the release actually, and maybe invert it. So that's cool, um, and that's actually also filtering the drums, which may or may not be necessarily what you want. So what we've got, I'll undo that. I'll get rid of the MIDI mapping here. Okay, and I did it with a filter, not completely down. So what I'll do instead is I'll add just to the uh, no, wrong channel. I'll add, I'll add to the um, pad channel, I'll add a Koala FX, for example. Okay. So now Koala FX, I want to automate, let's say, using new rack. I'll do the same thing, I'll do a filter. Um, and we can actually probably just click learn. There we go. So that went to 29, channel one. Now, you see that filter? Uh, we can now edit how much it goes down and, and the attack and the release. Let's make it release quicker. And see the bass wasn't at 50%, so that's why it's going, it's not completely flat. So now you can add multiple um, different controllers based on the same thing, or you can just map, let's say we want to match the, I don't know, the crush, right? Learn again, it takes it in. Now you see it's doing the same thing. Now we can change the range or, or invert the range. So there's a lot of possibilities, and actually the, this is cool if you want to do it and then you can resample this back into Koala. Um, so you've got the affected sound as a separate thing. Um, I won't go into too many tweaks on here, but basically you can then send that controller or any other controller, so we can have automation lane uh, B and C. Oh no, it's still happening. Okay, cool. So now B can have different settings. You can actually have a different input too, but you can basically set this to another another channel. This one I can control value two. So it's using the same drum signal, but this one I'll have going up instead of down. Uh, let's see. So that's going up. So let's make that CC, it doesn't really matter. Let's make it 24. Okay, so now here, it's still coming through here, but let's say CC 24 on this one. So, so it's going up and down with completely different settings. So that gives you a lot of um, options to like do some crazy sound design. Um, just changing the release, the attack. So that's basically what I wanted to show. I hope it's not too confusing. It, it is a bit advanced. Um, and obviously the last part requires you to have new rack, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got some, it's, you know, it can be a bit confusing. It's got some good stuff in it, um, with this and some MIDI automation stuff, which I can show in another video, but this is going on a bit, so I'll probably edit some of it out. Yep.
I'll put this on by YouTube and share it on the Koala page. Uh, if you've got any questions, drop them below. And um, thanks for watching.